Through this project, uh, we've achieved quite uh, quite some significant uh, milestones. Uh, over the last four years, we've managed to facilitate uh, the construction of uh, over 9,000 latrines, which roughly uh, would mean that about 45,000 people are actually be benefiting from an improved sanitation facility. Uh, Lirongwe uh, City used to uh, have the highest number of uh, cholera cases. Uh, I would remember maybe five years ago it was the highest in the whole country and uh, over the last three years there has been no cases registered and we're pretty sure that uh, this is as a result of uh, the work that's uh, come out of uh, this uh, this project and even the approach that we are using which is the sanitation marketing approach has been adopted by government as the right approach that has to be adopted by any other player uh, that uh, is working uh, in the uh, sanitation sector so we think that uh, with other projects coming there's a lot of learning that they are coming to learn from us not only from within Malawi but from also other neighboring countries and who are adopting similar approaches and applying them to their uh, local uh, context. The major challenge uh, is that we are dealing with uh, low income uh, communities and uh, uh, usually uh, the majority of the money that they have is usually to, uh, for food. So to convince them that they need to prioritize sanitation sometimes can be challenging because they have conflicting priorities. The other is that uh, these communities are actually uh, developing on uh, marginal land but also on land for which they do not have any security of tenure. So for them to actually invest in a sanitation facility, they see it as something that uh, they could lose if government decides to demolish that particular uh, uh, community. But also the majority are actually renting and the decision to actually invest in an improved sanitation lies with the landlord. So if they cannot convince the landlord, they do not have enough you know, power to say, okay, I will withhold my rent if, if you don't give me a sanitation facility. Because there's already somebody on the queue who wants uh, to actually occupy that particular house, be it that it doesn't have a sanitation facility. But also, uh, we haven't had a strong um, um, involvement at the higher level of the city council to actually run with us, to actually uh, enforce some of the bylaws that would also support uh, the investment in sanitation. By and by, they are coming on board, but we've not had that you know, strong engagement uh, from uh, the initial uh, start of the, of the project. Okay, I think the future is that um, we are always trying to learn uh, from the work that we are doing and uh, modifying uh, the approaches because we can't co copy and paste it from, from the textbook. So we're trying to adjust uh, how this is done. And one of, for instance, one of the areas that we are focusing on is on equity and inclusion, both for the water and the sanitation. So ensuring that as these 9,000 or so latrines are being constructed, they're not leaving out the disabled. So if I have a disabled person and have a latrine, it's our work to help that family uh, to understand if that particular latrine facility is actually addressing the needs of that disabled person within, within uh, our family. But it may also be other forms of exclusion, maybe uh, the chairman for a water point is, doesn't have a good relationship with you and then they are banning you from accessing that water po uh, point. So trying to ensure that every community member is actually included in the implementation but as well in the utilization of the facilities that are actually uh, created. But also we're trying to ensure that all the groups that support to mobilize others to adopt are adequately trained, are adequately motivated. And the motivation, by the way, is to see more people gaining access. And that's what they say is motivating them. So building the capacity of those institutions, ensuring that there are strong services locally within that community to actually service all these investments that are taking place. 
and overall we're looking at expanding to other low income areas within Lilongwe city that are not yet covered but we're also thinking that we need to go into the um, small towns which are generally one of the neglect neglected areas uh, in terms of investments in water as well as in sanitation.